there. Right. Marie, this is Ms. Novak. She's from Chicago. Marie is our receptionist. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I'll get your tickets. Thank you. You look very familiar to me, Marie. Have we met before? I don't think so, no. Well, I never forget a face. I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I don't look familiar to you. I'm sorry, no. I know. We met in Chicago. You were a waitress in a restaurant near the Art Institute. I've never been to Chicago. Oh. Have you ever driven a taxi in Egypt? <laughs> no. Oh, you were the pilot on a small airplane in China. You flew me over the Great Wall. Oh, no. Have you ever gone snorkeling in Australia? No. Driven a bus in Peru? No. Ms. Novak, I'm quite sure we've never met before. I came here only a year ago from Paris. Paris? Well, my sister Katerina lived there for a year. Katerina? Katerina Novak? Yes. She lived with me. Of course, you were in all the pictures she sent home. <laughs> what a coincidence. You see, I never forget a face. <laughs> I have your tickets. Oh, thank you. Did you know that Marie knows my sister, Katerina? Really? It's a small world, isn't it? So, are you going sightseeing before you leave? No, I'm going back to the hotel to read. What? You're visiting our great city and you're not even going to see it? I've come here once a month for eight years. I've seen it all before. I'm sure I can think of something you haven't seen. I think you're wrong. Have you visited the Riley Museum of Art? Twenty times. Hmm. Have you ever been to the top of the Olsen Building? Just last month. Have you eaten at Andre's Cafe? Twice. Ever been to Cold Beach? Yes. <laughs> Seen the City Opera? Yes. <laughs> Toured the Japanese Gardens? Yes. You can't have done everything in this city. I'm afraid it's true. <laughs> have you ever visited the Museum of Cheese? There's no Museum of Cheese. Aha. Uh -huh. It is really amazing. Everyone goes there. I can't believe you haven't been there yet. <laughs> Marie, could you call the Museum of Cheese and reserve tickets for Ms. Novak and me? You're not serious. I am. It's at the corner of 7th and Oak. I'll see you there at 4. Okay. I'll see you there. Thank you. Goodbye, Marie. Say hello to Katrina for me. Goodbye. Bye. Mr. Evans, is there really a museum of cheese at 7th and Oak? <laughs> it's a wonderful little cheese shop. They have every kind of cheese. Some of it's very old. So, yes, I'd say it's a museum of cheese. <laughs> There's no back will love it.
had a chance to do that Have you spoken to your family on the telephone? Have you taken time for a chat? Bow down, shake hands Do whatever you do in your native land I'll be happy to greet you in any about it yet If you haven't eaten dinner, are you in the mood for a meal you won't forget Bow down Shake hands Do whatever you do in your native land I'll be happy to greet you in any way that you understand
Give us another one, Marie. We're running out of time. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't find a parking space. Have you been here long? Since yesterday. <laughs> but it's no problem. The waiter brought us food and, and we slept on the floor. Have you chosen a movie yet? We've been trying. Unfortunately, these guys have seen almost everything. We like the movies. What about the action film, The Last Train to Hong Kong? Where is this train going? Believe me, you'd rather not know. We're going to Hong Kong, aren't we? You'd rather stay here and fight the hundred men? No, but I've always wanted to see Hong Kong. Look up! We've been doing this for a half hour. That looks a little too violent for me. What about on the bridge? I hear it's great. You're late, Frederick. I'm sorry. And I've waited for you for so long. I got stuck in traffic. For two years? Very romantic. How about the horror movie, The Hand? I've just returned from the train station. Have you seen anything lately? No. We should go inside. Good idea. I don't want to see that terrible hand. Do you really think there's a hand out there that... Oh, stop doing that right now, and the movie tickets are my treat. Deal! <laughs> I'm not buying you popcorn. Oh, come on. What do you want to do? Mm. No. Hey, isn't that David Doolittle, the famous British actor? You're right, it is. Let's go say hi. No! What are you doing? Aren't you David Doolittle? Well, yes, I am. Wow, we really like your movies. Thank you. You're great. Thank you very much. Remember that movie where you were that dancer? What was that called? The Dancer. That's it. That was unforgettable. I love that one where you're the chef. What's that one called? Dr. Falk. <laughs> that was so funny. Unforgettable, man. Thank you. My favorite is the one where you're that robot <laughs> musician named DD42. I just saw that movie again last week. That's a great movie. What's that called? Songs of Love. Yeah, man, that's unforgettable. <laughs> Thanks. You know what? I have to go soon, and I should finish my lunch. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. It was nice to meet you. Well, you too. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Isn't that what you say at the end of that movie where you're the pilot? High in the sky. Yeah, that was unforgettable, man. Unforgettable. <laughs> Would you guys care to join me? <gasps> What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite genre of movie? I love drama. I love comedy. But my, my favorite is drama. Do you think there's too much violence in movies? I think sometimes some films portray violence a little too graphically. But I feel that um, if it helps the plot along um, and there's sort of a point to the violence, then it's OK. But unnecessary violence really turns me off. So do you choose to go see movies if you know they're going to be violent? I usually tend to see films that get good reviews or are by uh, filmmakers whom I admire. I don't think violence would really, you know, sway me one way or the other. Do you ever go to see violent movies yourself? Yes, I've seen violent movies, um, thrillers and, and movies of that nature. Can violent movies be dangerous? Uh, I think people are dangerous. I don't know that movies are dangerous. Should children be allowed to see violent movies? No, I don't think children need to be watching violent movies, so. 
What's your feeling about violence? Is it harmful, particularly to children? Um, it, it, I think violence is um, harmful, um, especially in movies. Movies, children of certain ages should not see uh, violent movies because they're a little more influential and um, don't have the uh, judgment skills that adults do.
Hello, Top Notch Travel. Um, one moment, please. Hello, Top Notch. Uh, just a moment, please. <laughs> top Notch. Uh, hold, please. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Beatty. Cheryl? I'm afraid Cheryl's not here. You're not satisfied with your hotel. No bellman. I'm sorry. Cheryl will call you back. Okay. Goodbye. Hello? Uh, yes, hello, Mr. Rashid. Uh, Cheryl's not here. Can I take a message? You want a cheaper hotel in Budapest? A hotel without breakfast is okay. Very good. I'll give Cheryl your message. Goodbye. Hello? Oh, hi, Ms. Novak. She'll be right back. Is there a message? Can your cat stay with you at your hotel in Rio? <laughs> and you'd like to reserve a king-size bed. I'll ask her to check and call you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you're back. I have three messages for you. Let's see. Mrs. Beatty wants a cheaper cat. <laughs> Mr. Rashid isn't satisfied with his breakfast. <laughs> and Ms. Novak thinks the bellman needs a king-size bed. <laughs> They'll explain it all to you. What? to speak to a guest. Mrs. Beatty in room 514. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. This is Cheryl from Top Notch. How's Los Angeles? Well, the hotel isn't very nice, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay? You sound tired. My room is on the fifth floor. I had to walk up with my luggage. There's no bellman? No elevator? No. And I wanted a non-smoking room with a king-size bed. And I requested that for you. Well, they gave me a smoking room with a twin-sized bed. It's all they have. I'd better check your reservation. What hotel are you at? The Candle Inn, I think. And another thing, they didn't make up the room. The towels are dirty. Did you call housekeeping? They're not answering. And there are all these students everywhere. I thought you said that movie stars stay at this hotel. Mrs. Beatty, your reservation is for the Chandler Inn. You're in the wrong hotel. The Chandler Inn is a much nicer hotel. Oh. Well, I'd better call a taxi. How will you get your bags to the front desk? I'm sure I can find a student to help. I'll say I'm a movie star. <laughs> I'll be fine. OK. Good luck. Goodbye. Could you tell me um, some of the things that are important to you in a hotel, such as um, a fitness center, or a pool, a gift shop, a restaurant, a business center? 
I look more for a location in a hotel than anything is, anything else. So I want it to be close and convenient to whatever I'm doing in town. If I'm there to enjoy myself, uh, for example, then I want to be near the beach. Uh, so um, location is more important to me than anything else. I, I don't pay too much attention to the she hotel. She likes uh, one bed. <laughs> she doesn't like twin beds. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of hotels. If, they ha if they're comfortable, I'm happy with it. When you stay in a hotel, do you use room service? No, I try not to use room service because I like to get out and see a little bit of the town or the city that I'm staying in. Thinking about a really good hotel experience, could you tell me about that? Really what makes a hotel special is the, are the people who work there. If people there are very nice and friendly and people say good morning and know you by name and they, they, when you come back to the hotel they greet you and they ask you how your day was and they just make the difference. If, if when I stayed in a hotel I had, um, I had a bellman bring me flowers that were left over and put them in my room. And those are those little touches that I think make your experience or you stay in a hotel much more pleasant than when you just stay anywhere else. How about a worst hotel experience? Well, um, I have had experiences more, on more than one occasion where I've been in a room next to people that are rather noisy. And so that can be, that can be a distraction, especially when you've got to be up early in the morning. Hello? Paul! What happened to you? I had an accident with the van. Oh no. Are you okay? I'm fine. I was wearing my seatbelt. No one was hurt, but I think we're gonna need a new van. Well, what happened? I was driving on 6th Street, and there were a lot of fish on the road. A lot of what? Fish. <laughs> Why were there fish in the road? I don't know. Anyway, I tried to turn, but I had a problem with the steering wheel. The steering wheel broke? No. It came off. <laughs> so I drove over the fish. The fish made the road slippery, so I tried to stop. I hit a parked car. Oh, no. I'm not finished. The car behind me was tailgating, so he hit me. A car on the opposite side of the road hit a stop sign. The stop sign fell and smashed my hood. Oh, no. Then, worst of all, when I got out to look at the damage, a piano fell on the van. <laughs> what? Where did it come from? I don't know, but the van does not look good. The bumpers are damaged, so is the hood, the doors won't open, the windows won't close, the engine's not working, the, the headlights are smashed, the horn won't honk, and it smells like fish. <laughs> are there any parts that are okay? The steering wheel still looks good. <laughs> Great. All we need is a van to go with it. <laughs> We're going to need a van this afternoon. You're taking the tourist from Chile to the museum. I'll call the rental company. Are you hungry? Yeah. Want some of my fish sandwich? <laughs> oh, sorry. Guess not. <laughs> Hi. Is this auto rent? I need a rental car. A van. Do you rent vans? That's great. We'll need to pick it up right away. We'll probably need it for two weeks. 
Could we return it on the 15th of the month? Great. Four-wheel drive. I could take the group from France to the mountains. Do you have any four-wheel drive vans? They don't have four-wheel drive vans. How about a luxury van with DVD player and stereo? Do you have any luxury vans with DVD and stereo? Stereo, yes. DVD, no. How about a convertible van? <laughs> yes, the Do you have any convertible vans? <laughs> What color do you want? Blue. No. Red. No. Green. White will be fine. Insurance? Yes, we'd like insurance. Lots and lots of insurance, please.
Cheryl. Your hair looks gorgeous. Thank you. I have a new shampoo. Bright and clean. I'd like to try it. Did you find it at the drugstore? No. I bought it at my salon on Friday. I'll pick some up for you next time I'm there. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Would you like some too, Bob? I have shampoo. Thanks. But mine will make your hair softer and cleaner smelling. Um, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Don't you care about how you look? Of course I do. I shampoo, shower, and shave every day. That's all? Is there more to do? Don't you use any skincare products? Body lotion or skin cream? No. Should I? If you want your skin to stay young and healthy. Do you use any conditioner? That's for women. Lots of men use it too. Really? Sure. Women like men who take care of their appearance. Really? Okay. Uh, well, what else should I do? You don't want me to wear makeup, do you? <laughs> Lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow? No. But how about a manicure? <laughs> I'm serious. Look at your nails. They're a mess. Men get manicures? Many do, yes. We can give you one right here. Really? Piece of cake. Well, okay. Great. <laughs> then we can talk about your haircut, facial, and facelift. What? <laughs> what is this stuff on my face? It makes your skin soft and smooth. It tastes terrible. Oh. Sorry. I can't believe you cut my hair. And what'd you put in it? Some hairspray. Hairspray? Not much. You'll like it. There. Wow. My nails look great. Could I get a pedicure too? <laughs> no. My hair looks great too. See what a little personal care can do. Wow. Thank you so much. You know, it's customary to tip the person who gives you a haircut. How do I look? Good. You look really, really good. You look amazing. Then let's get pizza. My treat. Great! <laughs> you can never tell anyone about this. Especially the facial. Deal. Now when can I get an appointment for another manicure? <laughs> ready, why don't we sit down? This smells so wonderful. What are we having to eat? There's roast chicken, baked potatoes, salad, broccoli with garlic, red cabbage, and rice. Help yourself, everyone. Wow. That's a lot of vegetables. <laughs> vegetables are very healthy for you. Mr. Evans, would you like some chicken? Just a little, thank you. I'm not a big chicken eater. 
how about some potatoes? I'm sorry. I'm avoiding potatoes. <laughs> Some broccoli? I'll pass. I'm afraid it doesn't agree with me. <laughs> Cabbage. Sorry. I I'm allergic. <laughs> Mr. Evans, I'm so sorry. There's very little here for you to eat. I'm crazy about rice. <laughs> well, then, pass the rice, please. Cheryl, this tastes so delicious. Bob, you're not eating very much tonight. Don't you like the food? Bob's on a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. Good for you, Bob. I'm on a diet, too. <laughs> Why are you on a diet? You're so skinny. I'm trying to gain weight. I can't stand it. Bob! Cheryl, that was fantastic. The rice was terrific. Cookies, anyone? Yes. One, please. I'll take two, thanks. Or three. <laughs> Do you eat sweets, Mr. Evans? I used to, but I can't anymore. <laughs> no dessert for you, Bob? Not on his diet. But weren't you eating cookies today at work? I was eating carrots. Didn't I see you snacking on candy this afternoon? That was an apple. What about that ice cream you ate yesterday? Fruit salad. My mistake. These cookies are terrific. If you like the cookies, you'll love this cake. Oh. Would you eat some strawberries, Mr. Evans? Strawberries are my passion. Really? I'd eat strawberries on anything. <laughs> Cereal, pasta, even rice. <laughs> I'm crazy about chocolate cake. I can gain weight with every bite. I think I'll have a cookie. Bob, could you pass the... Oh. Where'd they go? I have one. I have four. I have none.
What do you think about this color? What is that color? It's tomato red. How does this color make you feel? Happy. Sad. Tired. I don't feel like looking at any more colors. <laughs> Quit complaining. How about this one? Happy. <laughs> Sad. Awful. I can't stand looking at it. Do you plan to do this all night? This one. Be sure to look carefully. Sad. Happy. Very, very nervous. Nervous about what? I'm nervous you're going to paint a whole wall that color. It's my apartment, Bob. Yeah, but we come here a lot. Can we discuss leaving the walls just like this? I'm tired of looking at yellow walls. Fine. Can you at least choose a color we'll all be excited about? There is no color you all like. Paul's feeling happy about everything. <laughs> Marie's feeling sad about everything. And you just seem to hate color, don't you, Bob? I love color. Just not those colors. <laughs> OK. Then why don't you find a color that everybody likes? <laughs> what do you think of this color? I like it. I like it, too, actually. I love it. I'm not painting the walls the same color as my sofa. The whole room would be green. You could change the color of the sofa. To what? The color of the walls would be a nice color. <laughs> Marie, you've been so quiet. Are you okay? I'm just a little down in the dumps. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been arguing about colors and you're feeling blue. Hmm, blue. <laughs> What's wrong, Marie? Don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I've just been feeling out of sorts. Don't worry. I can help. Dr. Cheer is here. Dr. Who? At school, people call me Dr. Cheer because I'm always happy and I enjoy cheering people up. You know that's true? You're always cheering me up. <laughs> How do you do that? I practice laughing every day. Laughing at what? Nothing. <laughs> I just choose to laugh. <laughs> you just decide to laugh? I can't do that. It's not in my nature. How do you know? Just try. Let me hear you laugh. Ha ha. Louder. Ha ha. Come on, keep laughing. Ha 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 You're right. It's not your personality. What now, Dr. Cheer? Chocolate? Yes! <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you most like in terms of personality? My mother. And why do you say that? Outgoing. She smiles a lot. Do you have any brothers or sisters? One brother, two, three sisters. OK, and then how are you different? Is, say, one more extroverted than the other or more introverted? Uh, well, I'm quiet, calm. I don't really get excited over things. and. 
just take it easy. I don't let things bother me a lot. While my sisters, they will get excited and get upset, and uh, so I'm not like that. Okay, how about first children? Do you think that they have certain traits that they share? Well, I think my brother being the oldest and the only boy was allowed to get away with things a lot more than my sister and I. And what I mean by that is, um, as the oldest and as a boy, he was able to go to concerts at an earlier age than my sister or I. Um, he kind of got out of household duties uh, that my sister and I had because he was babysitting us. And how about if you're the last in a big family? Do you think that uh, you get special benefits from that? <laughs> yeah, you get clothes. <laughs> what about birth order? Do you think that makes a difference who's the oldest and who's the youngest? Um, I don't think so. Not important. I don't think it's important. It's just the personality.
Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Let me take that over. Okay. Oh. Hello, everyone. You remember Ms. Novak? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Ms. Novak has just opened an art gallery here. I've asked her to find some pieces to decorate our office. She's brought some things for us to look at today. I have a painting, a sculpture, and a photograph that I think you'll like. Here's the painting. <laughs> this was painted by a Russian artist that I really like. It's called Sun on the Water. The artist was inspired by looking at the sea. What do you think? I think I could do that. Oh. It's fantastic. How interesting. It's very blue. Yes. It's gorgeous. Oh, good. Here's the sculpture. It was made by a British sculptor. It's called City of Gold. Is it really gold? No, it's made of wood. It was painted gold. What do you think? It's cool. Mr. Evans, I think it would look good in your office. I think I preferred the painting. I'm fascinated by it. Good. And here's the photograph. <laughs> it's called Winter. It was photographed in Paris. There's nothing there. It's a photograph of snow in a park. Maybe I should buy them all. What do you think? Hey, look, I'm an artist. Here's my latest work. It's called Office Walls. It was inspired by looking at the walls of the office. Are you a photographer? Yes. Oh, well, no, I, I take a lot of pictures. Oh. Hmm. Well, I'm not so crazy about that one. <laughs> but I do like what you've done here. Oh, I'm very moved by it, actually. It's a fascinating mixture of Eastern and Western traditions. You have talent. I do. I think I could sell this. Really? It's very good. I'm crazy. About photography. Well, do you have any more of your work here? Uh, no. Huh. Here's my card. Why don't you bring me some pieces on Friday? Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> So, where are we going to put this thing? Hang it by my desk. Really? Yeah. As an artist, I'm really starting to like it. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the most interesting works I've ever seen.
Something. Sure. I'm trying to print a file, but the printer won't work. Push the green button on the printer. Why? To turn it on. It won't print unless it's on. <laughs> oh, right. Silly me. Thank you. 
<laughs> hey, Bob, my laptop crashed and I can't get it to do anything. I, I type on the keyboard and nothing happens. Stick this here. Why? To restart the computer. You sure? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bob, I could use a hand with something. What is it? Somebody sent me an email, but I think it has a virus in it. Don't open the attachment. Click on the no virus icon on the toolbar. Why? To clean the computer and stop the virus. Thanks. <laughs> Bob, can I ask you another question? I'm sorry, but I can't get any work done with all these questions. Please, I have some very important stuff I need to finish right now. Game over. Game over. Very important stuff. Game over. Game over. How can I help you? Hey, Mr. Evans? Yes? You asked me to build a website for the company? Oh, yes. How's it coming along? Well, sir, I, I think I need some new technology. Well, what do you need? A new scanner. What's that? It's a scanner, sir, but it's not nearly as good as this one. This one would give us much better photos. Okay. And a digital camera would be good. What's that? It's not a digital camera, sir. It won't take pictures as easily as this one. Okay. And also a new laptop. <laughs> it's not as fast as this one. I see. Anything else? A new DVD drive. And I could also use a new joystick. A joystick? Isn't that for computer games? Well, I don't really need the joystick. What's all this going to cost me? What? Well, actually, we could do without the DVD drive. <laughs> and the laptop. And the camera. And the scanner. Great. Could you tell me some of the things you use the computer for? I use my computer every day at work um, to make schedules. I do a lot of that at my job. Um, also to email friends and coworkers about things that need to get done for the day. Would you say you're a computer addict? <laughs> yes, I am a computer addict. Okay. How about just overall time spent on the computer? I think it kind of depends on what you're using the time for, because if you're doing, you know, research for projects and things like that, spend as much time as you like on the computer, you know, because it's, it's easy and it's fast, so. But how about games and surfing and chat? Mm, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's probably about the same as television. Too much of it just isn't a good idea. I mean, when you can get outside and enjoy the city. Do you think children should be allowed to use the Internet? With guidance, I think they should be allowed to use the Internet. What do you see as the advantages of the Internet? Uh, well, communication is certainly an advantage. With, uh, Like I said, with, with email, you can keep in touch with friends all over the country, uh, practically free of charge. Uh, also, the, the wealth of knowledge that you can pick up. You can, you can ask the computer with, with, uh, with your search engines uh, any question at all and come up with thousands of answers. You have to choose the one you like. <laughs> And do you see some particular dangers for you even, um, but particularly for children? Um, 
I mean, at this point, I feel as though I'm, you know, like an adult, so I can kind of censor what I want to look at and things like that, but kids don't necessarily have that, and they're a little bit more curious, so I think that they definitely need that supervision. I can't believe I'm eating this. I can't believe you're eating it either. <laughs> you know, that man looks like someone I know. That man just left something at his table. That's David Doolittle, the actor. <laughs> he left his hat. And his gloves. And his cell phone. <laughs> and his keys. Hold these. What are you doing? I'm giving him back his hat. What about these? <laughs> Sir, excuse me. Sir? Is this hat yours? Uh, that's mine, yes. Thank you. Did I leave it here? I saw it under your table. <laughs> Thanks again. You're welcome. If you don't give him back the rest of his things, I will. Just wait. <laughs> Sir, excuse me. Sir. <laughs> yes. Are these gloves yours? Yes, they're mine. I'm forgetting everything, aren't I? Aren't you David Doolittle? Well, I am, yes. I'm Marie Lepage. I'm a big fan. Well, thank you. And uh, thanks for these. My pleasure. <laughs> Mr. Doolittle? What would I do without you? You know, I'm missing my mobile. Have you seen it? I don't see it under your table. Well, I'm in a hurry. If uh, you do find it, would you be so kind as to call me at my office? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> I have David Doolittle's phone number his cell phone. <laughs> just stole David Doolittle's cell phone. David Doolittle was here? I didn't steal it. He left it. And I'm waiting to return it until tonight. He asked if it was under the table. You said it wasn't. It wasn't under the table. Because it was in my pocket. <laughs> well, I think that's wrong. It's not wrong. He'll get his phone back. What do you two think? Oh. <laughs> What are you going to do now? I'm going to call him tonight, tell him I found his phone, and ask him to meet me for dinner. You're going to ask him to dinner? Sure, why not? <laughs> Women don't ask men to dinner. Do they? <laughs> oh, don't be so old-fashioned, Cheryl. This is the 21st century. Women ask men out to dinner all the time. Don't they? <laughs> Well, I still think it's wrong. You should have given him the phone. Cheryl, I have to tell you something. What? Do you remember when we met? Of course. I was at the park. I'd lost my bag and you helped me find it. it took us two hours. We talked and talked and I became more interested in Bob than in finding the bag. <laughs> Well, actually, I found your bag in two minutes. But I waited two hours to tell you. I thought you were the most amazing woman I had ever met. 
And if you had found your bag right away, you would have left, and we wouldn't be here right now. That is so <laughs> romantic. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love this man. <laughs> if it worked for Bob, it might work for me. Oh, you and David Doolittle? Ah, oh, that'd be fantastic! Call, call him! If you got a bill in a restaurant that was obviously wrong, what would you do? I would tell the waitress and ask her if everything's okay. I think they should tell the waiter. And what should they tell them? Um, that um, they're given too much change or they're undercharged. How about if a person's shopping in an department store and uh, an expensive piece of clothing has a tag on it that's obviously wrong, it's priced too low. Uh, would that, should that person tell the cashier or just pay for it? I usually ask. That's me, though. <laughs> well, I, I would go to the cashier, or I think everybody should go to the cashier at least and ask, is that right? And if he says it's right, then at least you tried it. And then suppose you found some cash on the street, not in a wallet, just some cash lying on the street. What would you do with it? I'd pick it up and put it in my pocket. <laughs> I usually do not pick up money if a very poor person is around, because I think a poor person needs it more than I do. So I'd leave it lying there. So are the three situations, the restaurant, the department store, and the cash on the street, the same or different? I think each one is different. Why? Um, you make judgments all the time and not everything is equal. <laughs>